Our planet is a wondrous place, full of amazing animals, such as this dog and this fearsome bunch of lizards. Landforms, such as plains, that are teeming with grass-eating horses, and beautiful lakes in which fish frolic freely. Here's a family of fancy chimps about to get into their luxury off-road vehicle. Since it has only two doors, they'll have to be clever. Come on, guys. Can you try? Um, why are you talking like that? I don't know what you're talking about. But clearly, the younger one is too busy being Does sassy. Does anyone hear that British voice? No. Well, the older one doesn't appear to be in on the joke. Oh my gosh, this is not planet Earth. The matriarch of the clan, uh, <clears throat> Uh, oh, okay, uh, I'll just start the video. Defender is an iconic model from an iconic brand, kind of like the Jeep Wrangler or the Ford Bronco or the Pontiac Aztec. That doesn't make sense. But the Defender's British heritage has always sort of made it the gentleman's choice, which may or may not justify its higher price. The one you see here costs $107,000, and by the end of this video, I'm going to maybe try to justify why it's worth 107 grand. And you let me know whether or not you think I'm successful. Let's start with the Defender's obvious trump card, which is off-road ability. Since this is a fully loaded Defender 90 with the V8, that means it comes with the air springs and the dynamic adaptive suspension. That means it can raise and lower itself from 8.5 inches of ground clearance to nearly 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. And it can ford water up to almost three feet deep, which it also measures and tells you while you're doing it, which is like, pretty cool. It has full-time four-wheel drive, a two-speed transfer case, and locking center and rear differentials. It uses a brake base system to simulate a front locking differential for sort of maximum off-road control. And did I mention that the air suspension can bleed air from the left to the right side of the vehicle to sort of simulate a live rear axle's articulation? Because it can do that. And that's freaking dope. And that's just the tough stuff. Terrain Response 2 gives you all sorts of off-road modes, including normal mode for normal driving. It gives you grass and snow mode for slippery stuff. It gives you mud and ruts for when you're getting down and dirty in the squish. And it gives you a sand mode. That's pretty self-explanatory. It also has a rock crawl mode for when the going gets really tough, and it has specific settings for when you encounter water that needs fording. On top of all that, it has an auto mode for dummies like me, where the Land Rover Defender will just sort it all out for you because it's like you don't know what you're doing. You can access all of these modes from the redundant dials on the center stack, and it gives you all of the pertinent information on the infotainment screen, including an idiot's guide to what each of the modes means, which is nice if you're an idiot. And it will display in real time all of the relevant camera, sensor, and suspension articulation information on the infotainment screen. So when you're off-road, you're in complete control. Oh, and the rest of the tech in here, it's not bad either. You get heated and cooled seats, you get a heated steering wheel, you get a panoramic sunroof. The 11 inch touchscreen works exceedingly well, features wireless Apple CarPlay, and alternates between being an infotainment source and an off-road ally. This one also has a cool box in the center console, which is always a family favorite. The multi-purpose dials on the center stack are really cool. I mentioned how you can switch your off-road 
road mode using them, but you can also click on them and you can adjust the heated and cooled seats. I think that's exactly how automakers should do redundant dials. It's simple, it's intuitive, and it works really, really well. I also really like the 12 inch digital gauge cluster. It looks crisp, it looks modern, and it's extremely customizable. And you can bring it up to display your map, or you can bring it up to display your media sources, or you can just go with the basic classic double dials. That's what I go with because I'm old now. Also, for an off-road vehicle, this has the upgraded Meridian sound system, which sounds really good for something that's meant to be kind of a rough SUV. And I think the interior as a whole pulls off that sort of premium tough SUV. It's a very nice place to be. It feels several steps beyond the competition, as it should at $107,000 but it doesn't have that sort of, I've settled for the plastic like you do in the Bronco and the Wrangler. Now, does that justify the $107,000 price tag? Well... Obviously, since this is a Defender 90 two-door model, space is a little more compromised than it would be in the four-door model. Now, in the front, I fit great, and the seats are incredibly comfortable. But the rear seat is a little more compromised. I can fit back there, but it's not ideal getting in and out. Do you want to see me fit back there at six foot six? I figured you might. There's space for the girls as well, but my girls are very tall. Ella's 6'1", and Hallie's over 5'10 now, and they weren't exactly happy about it. Now, cargo space is kind of an either-or affair. You either have the rear seats up, where you have 15 cubic feet of cargo space, or you can fold the rear seats down and get a respectable 58 cubic feet of cargo space, which is quite good, but I think it goes without saying that then you no longer have rear seats, and this thing essentially becomes a coupe. If you're a rich couple with a dog, then this vehicle might be perfect, but if you're a poorer couple with two extremely tall children, and two cats and a dog, the situation is not exactly the best. Even though it's not all that different from the Ford Bronco that Mrs. Jax desperately wants. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Now, I'm gonna admit something. When I first saw the Land Rover Defender, I thought it looked stupid. The pictures in the magazines didn't really convey the size and scale of the thing, and I thought it had lost some of the angular ruggedness that made the old Defender so endearing and so tough. But in this Stormtrooper spec, with this white and black accents, I think it looks freaking fantastic. And I am 100% happy to admit that I was completely wrong. I have utterly fallen in love with the way that this thing looks, especially in this ridiculous two-door trim. I, I just think it's phenomenal. The rear view is especially nice, where the kind of roof line mimics that squarish profile of the old Defender. This one wears sort of cartoonishly large 22-inch wheels, but it looks so fantastic on the stubby profile that I'm totally willing to forgive it that bit of exaggeration. On its tippy toes with the air suspension fully lifted, it looks like a concept vehicle. It looks like it shouldn't exist, but it somehow does. I absolutely adore the way this thing looks, and I haven't been this happy to be this wrong in quite some time. And now I desperately want one of these in my driveway. <laughs> That being said, I don't think I've done a very good job so far convincing you why this thing is worth $107,000, but 
maybe this will help depending on your priorities. Under the hood is a 5 liter V8 engine, making 518 horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque. And all of that is running through a very smooth shifting 8 speed automatic transmission. For context, the Bronco Raptor makes 100 less horsepower, technically fewer language arts, and is over half a second slower to 60 than the Defender 90. Here, take a look at my excitement. Ah uh, yes, the power. You're never not aware of it, and when you want it... <laughs> God, it's just ridiculous. You legitimately forget that this thing is more powerful than a Bronco Raptor, and then you put your foot in it, and it just goes ballistic. You absolutely do not need that. I do wish for what this is, there was a little more theater from the exhaust note. Take a listen. Yeah, it's good and all, but considering the urgency that this thing has, it's just so hilarious. No, that is lunacy. You don't need that. You might want that, but you don't need that. See what I mean? The Wrangler 392 makes 470 horsepower by comparison, is faster to 60 miles per hour, but unfortunately has the interior of a golf cart. The price is wrong. Now the downside to the Defender's power is relatively horrific fuel economy. I've been averaging around 15 miles per gallon, which is not great. Although it should be noted that that's as good or better than the aforementioned competitor, so there is that. Oh, and you know what else is better? The driving experience. Yeah, if you're like uh, 22 inch wheels on a very short wheelbase leads to an excellent ride? But that doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to. This thing should be bouncing all over the place. There should be lots of vibrations, and there's just not. It rides exceptionally well. These seats are fantastic. They're somehow cushy but supportive. They're very, very comfortable. I really like them. I've got a messed up back, too, if you're new to the channel, and I appreciate good seats with nice lumbar. This is so far beyond something like the Bronco or the Wrangler in terms of just day-to-day -day comfort. Because if you're being honest with yourself, driving something like a Bronco or a Wrangler, especially a Wrangler, can be somewhat fatiguing over time. And you don't get any of that in the Defender at all. This thing is incredibly comfortable day-to-day. -day. What impresses me the most, considering this vehicle's capability and height, is there's very little head toss, there's very little rocking. That's something that really drives me nuts on SUVs when they're not buttoned down. And this exhibits almost none, considering what it is capable of doing. The steering is a little numb, it's a little bandy as I like to say, but it is very accurate. And it's almost kind of quick, and I think the short wheelbase helps to kind of like amplify that feeling. Similarly, the brake pedal is a little mushy, but it's got very nice progression as you push down. The brakes are very easy to modulate, which I imagine would be a benefit off-road. My only sort of driver input criticism would be that I feel like the throttle pedal is just a little bit touchy. It feels like there's an initial push and then it gives you the power, which in this vehicle, because it has the uprated engine and it is so powerful, it kind of comes on like a rush. You'd probably get used to it though, but it's something that might catch you by surprise if you weren't expecting it. I just can't say enough good things about the Defender's ride and handling balance if you are shopping for a Defender. I don't know if it's because of the air springs that this model has. I would go full suspension kit when I was pricing one out for fun, I did, and I think it's 100% worth it because to have this thing's off-road ability with this level of comfort as you just go through your daily errands is exceptional. So, $107,000. That's a lot of money. It's more than the Bronco Raptor and the Jeep Wrangler 392, but then again, the Defender's driving dynamics are significantly better than both of those vehicles. The Lexus GX is similarly capable off-road, but that feels a million years old by comparison. And while I do love the Lexus GX, 
I would prefer the Defender 90. I think it goes without saying that the Defender drives way better than the GX2. I'm not saying that this particular spec and trim is necessarily worth it. 107 grand is a lot for what is essentially a toy. But in a way, the Defender has few direct competitors. You can spend less on a Bronco and a Wrangler, but you get a noticeably worse interior and driving experience. And here's the thing, you can spend less on this as well. So does that mean you should buy a Land Rover Defender? Well, yes, but just not this one. I mean, not unless you want to drop over $100,000 on a toy. Are you stupid? I guess in a way, I kind of failed. I didn't justify this particular model's price tag, which is pretty extravagant. But maybe I did justify why you should buy one. Let me explain. I enjoyed this thing so much that I went on Land Rover's website and I priced one out. So I did the 110 model for the four doors and I got everything I wanted on it and it came out to $81,000. It looked freaking sick too. Now that was with the turbocharged and electrically supercharged inline six, which makes 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, which is plenty. That's the one that I would get. And to be honest with you, now I really want one. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you did and you'd like to stick around, consider subscribing. Please like the video if you thought it was good and share it with whoever's interested in a Land Rover Defender. And I will see you in the next review. All right, peace. Hey there, person hanging out in the credits. Do you wanna help the channel? Click on one of the videos that's somewhere around me because the more you watch, the more this channel grows. Filming driving segments during the holidays when you've got all sorts of people from out of town and they drive like absolute morons. Such a joy, such a joy, so much Christmas spirit. Mm. Behind the scenes of car reviews.